that, that's the basic thing. I, I, I really meant to be a scientist. I went to Union, which is right down the road, and um, I had wonderful teachers. Um, I really loved doing biology there. And I started graduate school in the zoology department at UMass Amherst in a PhD program with every intention of becoming a scientist. And in particular, I wanted to do animal behavior, and I was um, sure that that's what I was going to do. And I wasn't five or six weeks in before I realized I was just hopelessly, apoplectically bad at this, and there was no hope of getting better. Um, I really don't have a scientific brain, and I just hadn't understood that at all. Um, I, you know, part of being a scientist is not reading about science, is not appreciating the dramatic lies of science, is not standing in a field with your jaw hanging slackly open and watching the butterflies, which I tend to do a lot of. Um, it's, um, it's being able to ask questions in a certain form that enable you then to form hypotheses that can be answered. It's not, you know, if you form questions that can't be answered, I think that's metaphysics, it's not science. Um, and it turns out I ask questions that can't be answered. But it also turns out that writing fiction, that's sort of what your job is, is you're not meant to answer the questions. You're meant to pose questions in a way that other people are emboldened to look at the same questions and say, huh, what do I think about that? What's going on with that? Is there an answer to that? Um, it took me quite a long time to make the transition. It was, I dropped out of I went to school young and I went to graduate school young, so I was in and out of graduate school before I was 19. And um, I didn't start really writing till I was 27 or 28. And the years in between are really best passed over in silence. <laughs> they were ugly. <laughs> they were ugly. So um, no clear path there. <laughs>